Hi, Kevin. Hello, Ricardo. How are you? Doing good. All right. That's good. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Uh, sorry for yesterday. I thought it was for today, to be honest. <laughs> Don't worry. It's okay. I know it happens. We tend to forget things, so it's okay. Don't worry. All right. Yeah. So um, do you want to be the first one? Yeah, is it possible that I can be the first All right. one? Yes. That would be great. Yeah. Awesome. You, can, you can be the first one here. Hello, Wendy. Hello. How are you? Good, good, and you? <laughs> I'm all right. I'm all right. Okay. Thanks everything. It's okay. So, cool. um, uh, Felix, do you want to ask something? Hi, teacher. Good evening. How good are evening. you? I'm all right. Thanks for asking. How about yourself? Awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm great. I'm doing great. Yeah. Excellent. I, I, I want to ask you, can I be the second? All right. Okay. You can. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Peter, so I can, I can be the, can be, can I be the next one, please? All, all right. So we're going to sure. do it in this order. After Felix. Okay. Yeah. We're going to do it in this order. So number one is going to be Ricardo, number two, Felix, and number three, Wendy, and then we can uh, move on with the rest. All right. So um, we are going to take advantage of the time that we have right here. Um, so I hope everyone's ready. Let's see. I just want to confirm. Let's see. Camilo, are you ready for today? Yeah. I All right. So. Heidi? Yes, I am. Awesome. And Jorge? Yes, of course. Perfect. Kevin, like sorry. Yep. Sorry for the interruption, but um, can I go first? I um I don't have internet right now, so I'm using as a hotspot my cell phone. Cell phone? Oh. Yeah, okay. sure. Fabricio. Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go, uh, go ahead. I can be a All phone. right. <laughs> Thank I'm you. Sorry. Oh, somebody <laughs> no, else asked you. <laughs> no, yeah. no, no problem. Before. <laughs> it's okay. All sorry, right. I don't know. Tigo is not working well today. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ricardo. Now, let's go with um, Heidi then. Let's go, Heidi. The time is all yours. Okay, thank you. I will do my best. Uh, just uh, let me know if you can see my, my screen. Yes. Uh, just let me hear um, slide. Uh, I am not how to uh, initiate the, but you can see the, the slides, right? Yes. yes, I can see it here, but okay. I can see the conclusion. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> All right. Okay. <clears throat> All okay. Right. I uh, chose this type of uh, software, uh, this, this type of computer parameters. Well, I will explain you why at the end of the presentation. All I right. modified my, my presentation to make it shorter. And okay, let's start uh, the content of this uh, uh, presentation is uh, uh, first we have the definition of what a software developer is. Then we have the types of software developers. And next we have this, the skills that this kind of developers need. <clears throat> and finally, we have a, a little conclusion. Okay, I will start uh, giving you a little definition of what is a software developer. Uh, the software developers create software to meet the user needs by employing diagrams and models, writing code and ensuring overall functionality. <clears throat> Typically, the developers, of course, with another members of the teamwork, uh, they uh, meet with a, a customer or a client who has a need for software to be developed. So the developers um, <clears throat> um, understand what is the problem and then they build the software to solve this problem. So <clears throat> we have uh, 
two types of software developers. Uh, the first one is the application software developers. As the name says, they uh, focused on creating uh, applications or programs or database to be used internally or online. And they focused on a single area of application, such as the mobile uh, phones. The responsibilities for this type of, of developers include understanding the client's uh, needs, uh, write the call to build the software that solves this pro the, the, the problem or the need, and um, build a prototype and then test the software and uh, the booging to find the, the errors. <clears throat> and the other type of uh, software developers are the system software developers, and they focused on uh, designing operating systems. Uh, these uh, operating systems um, keep the computer functioning and they can be found in most of the consumers' electronics that we use every day. For example, the smartphones or the cell phones, and they often build interfaces <coughs> that allows the users to uh, interact with the computers. So those are the two types of software developers. And I will talk now about the skills. We have two types of skills, the hard, the hard skills and the soft skills. The hard skills, have to do with uh, knowledge. They need a knowledge of operating systems and knowledge in app development programming languages like Swift. Swift, which is the principal language for the Apple devices. Uh, C, C, Java, C++, and among, among others. And they need to know about software security because developers need to ensure the data safety uh, by adding some security layers to the software <clears throat> or, or the apps. And finally, they need to know about data structures and algorithms and it enables to developers to, uh, to write efficient code. The data structures are methods to organize the information, such as se sequences of numbers, tables, and the algorithms are um, sequences of steps that a computer takes to transform data into functionality for the users. <clears throat> And then we have the soft skills. Uh, the first one is the problem solving capabilities. Most of softwares are created to, um, to provide a solution to a problem. <clears throat> and um, these uh, skills is important, is also important. Uh, because the developers need to um, to face some problems during the development processes. So they need to, uh, well, to solve it. <clears throat> we have the communication skills. Uh, developer never works alone. They need to work with another teams and uh, they need to use appropriated language because uh, most of the customers doesn't have um, technology background. So they need to use normal language. And the next one, the analytical thinking. 
the developers are always analyzing, <clears throat> analyzing the problems, analyzing the possible solutions, the code, analyzing the tests, the results. And so that's an uh, important skill. And patience, because uh, sometimes uh, there are uh, many problems in the development process. And the patient helps to, to keep the motivation strong. <clears throat> and uh, the last one is the emotional intelligence because sometimes there are some um, unforeseen circumstances that can distract the developers from achieve the goals. So the emotional intelligence helps them to, to keep calm and focused. And uh, as a little conclusion, I have to say that I chose this kind of, of program, uh, <coughs> sorry, uh, uh, computer program, uh, because uh, they are not just developers, the code is not just code. They are some of the most vital and important people in the world because their job affect our lives, sometimes in a bad way, but the most in the good way. They improve our, our um, quality lives. And they can work in many sectors, in medical sectors, travel sectors, finance sectors, and many others. Uh, well, that, that's the end of my presentation. Uh, thanks for your All attention. All right, awesome. Heidi, you did a great job. I'm just curious about something, Heidi. Maybe you can help me with that because you know about this. So when you call, this is, this is not nothing about grammar. No, it's it's one a, a question that I have myself. All right. So when you say you, I, I, I'm not sure if I heard you saying debugging or bugging. Is that the process when you look for the errors just to make sure that is going to work or not? Is that correct? Just to make sure I understood correctly. Yes, that's correct. Uh, the developers use some tools when they can um, track line by line the code and they can find where specifically is the error. Sometimes some uh, programs have thousands of lines and it's very hard to find where is exactly the, the error. So they use they use these tools to find uh, the specific line where is the, the, the error so they can um, work out box. Excellent. All right. You clarify my doubt. That was like a personal doubt I had about it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Heidi. Very good. Good job. You're welcome. So, all Thank right. You. Awesome. So remember that I will keep writing my feedback to you. And then once I have everything done and completed, I'll type them and I will send them to you directly so you can read them, all right? Excellent. So thank you, Heidi. Let's go with Ricardo. Let's go, Ricardo, the time is all yours. Thank you. Uh, just let me share my screen. Uh, I think you guys can now see, right? Yes. I can say it. Okay, awesome. Well, as you can see, uh, my type of programs that I chose it was game programmers. And not because for uh, any particular reason, I I just really like um, and enjoy video games in general. And yeah, I have to say, I have to be honest that when I started my career, and uh, one of my dreams was, well, when I was to start my career, one of my dreams was to create my own video game. 
So yeah. Um, well, uh, but first, uh, before we start, we need to know uh, who are game programmers? What do they do? So we have that the game game developers or game programmers uh, are programs are programmers that are specialized in creating video games for a specific uh, platform or console. This this includes uh, the three main um, uh, well uh, like uh, Mac, Windows, uh, and Linux. Linux uh, I think it's that way it's correct and also uh, when well game programmers uh, when a company comes or a client comes with a game idea it is the job of the programmer to go through this plan or idea and create a and create the game also they are the ones who design uh, everything about the game like I'm gonna go through through that later uh, here uh, with a skill set. Okay, so the skill set. Uh, there are plenty of programming languages to use uh, out there in the market. They can go from assembly to a more powerful language such as Lua, uh, which is was used for games like Angry Birds and and World of Warcraft that for me is like uh, compare a mobile game to a big um, big game for PC that is such as World of Warcraft. Uh, that's really mind blowing because World of, Gra World of Warcraft is oh my god it's big. I don't know how how can I describe how big it is. It's it's really awesome. So how this programming language it is used for both of them uh, well uh, <clears throat> also there are skills or there are more programming languages and skills whatever you want to call it such as c plus plus c sharp uh, these two being the most common uh, since they can be used with a uh, graphic engine uh, graphic engines like unity and that is one of the largest graphic engines out there in the market. So yeah, but so far we have talked about uh, everything about technical skills, but uh, there's like, I wanna talk about uh, about soft skills because I need like in every job, uh, especially in, in this area, uh, it is really important to to know what soft skills we need to know. Uh, so before before we start, uh, I need to mention that uh, that as a person that consumes and played a lot of video games, I feel that the most important soft skills are the one that the the uh, the programmer itself needs to enjoy the video game that it's doing. Because imagine you are you you don't like video games, but your your job is to be well. Your job is create video games. It's like you know, I don't know that 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 is the reason of some of the common errors companies right now have uh, because they don't give all this passion to the to the games or to the apps itself. Um. Well, uh, as I mentioned, uh. In the start, I am not like a, a game developer or a game programmer, but as a part of, as a part of the quality engineer team, I wish that in the future to be part of a, a game team of game developers as a QA as a game tester. There are like um, a specific uh, certifications for that, and there are big companies such as Blizzard that has that that are. Uh, Platinum uh, with this certification. So, uh, yeah, that's it. That is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, excellent. 
do you see yourself like right now you don't have any any right now you are not working in this particular area right yeah all right so would you like to be in the future yeah totally yeah do we have this type of like where do you study this basically in the university Wait. all right yeah actually uh, yeah. the university of uh, gavidia university of francisco gavidia have this career of game really? development yeah uh, fun fact my my uncle it's like uh, the director of that career oh. so yeah and there there is a, a game developer uh, a team of game developers here in el salvador where they created a, a really cool game that it's available on steam and nintendo switch uh, and i forgot the name but it's really cool yeah all right yeah all right. that's good that's yeah. good just uh, out of curiosity just like my you know my questions right i don't know about this okay. world so okay you, you better answer my question <laughs> <sighs> so let's say if somebody wants to enter this world and stuff like that I bet uh, they need to have a good computer at home, right? Or not? Yeah, they yeah they do. Uh, most of the time, you need a graphics card, especially for the render part of the game when you're working on the three D and two D renders. You need a a really good computer for that. All right, excellent. That solves my question. Okay. Thank you, Ricardo. That was a great presentation. Awesome. I liked it. All right. Very good. So I don't remember who's, who was next. I think it was Felix. I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm yep. Next. All right. So you're okay. free to go. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Good evening. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> Why? Come on. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, well, thank you for joining and for participating in this presentation session. And I pulled up my screen. I hope you are seeing the presentation, right? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Since yesterday, the colleagues who have made a very good presentations, have been explaining in detail the basics of uh, software development, the characteristics of certain programmers, and what a software engineer is not. So I will go directly to the type of programmer who I would like to be. Ta -ta -tan. So personally, I'm very interested in web development. Web de developers, like any other programmer or profession, play cr crucial uh, role in today's digital age, right? With almost everything that is running on technology and in the internet, Web developers are responsible for creating the websites and we use and relay on a daily basis, right? They also are the ones who build the structure of a website and create programs that determine how it works and how it functions. Also, we can find here great digital artist. I bring you this time a couple of uh, incredible websites created with parallax effects. So let me switch here and let me share you the, 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 the audio. How can I do this? Disable share, share sound. OK, OK sound enable and let's start <laughs>
to get some She's So this is a really nice website that uh, is showing you the porch cars evolution, right? And uh, here in this website, not only sells the brand porch, but um, sells you the experience, right? It's th this is like amazing. This kind of of websites. Also, there is another one using these uh, kind of effects parallax effects. If you see here, uh, this is like a 3D models that are following the mouse, right? Let me once again share you the noise, the, the, the sound. And this movie is a furniture store. So when I hover the mouse here, it's all the things I can interact with all the things. I scroll, I'm going to another world. This is, these are amazing things. <laughs> so these are the things that we can find also and we can uh, create being uh, web develop developers. Let me switch once again to the presentation. Okay, so going back, the skills. To be a successful web developer, uh, we need to have a comprehensive knowledge of programming languages. This is essential. Uh, for example, we have JavaScript, we have TypeScript. Uh, those are the common programming languages used by web developers in the client side. Uh, they also work with popular uh, frameworks or libraries like React, Angular, Vue, and also we have some management systems such as WordPress, Drupal, and Joomla. Customizing the websites according to the owner's preference is uh, the like the main job of the web developer, right? Web developers not only focus on the technical aspects, but also contribute to shaping modern day uh, digitalization. They ensure that the websites are user-friendly, visually appealing, and functional. They work with scripts that predict user actions and create interactive experience as we saw in the uh, websites before, right? So additional web developers are responsible for organizing and presenting information on the websites, making it easy for users to navigate and find what they need. So what is needed to be a successful web developer? So a, a successful web developer needs uh, to keep up with the latest trends and advances, advancements in web development. This field, uh, as you may know, is constantly evolving with new technologies and frameworks emerging day by day. So continuously learning and staying updated with industry standards are crucial to delivering high quality websites. Attention to detail and problem problem solving skills are vital traits for a web developer. They need to debug and troubleshoot issues that arise during website development and ensure that the website functions seamlessly across different browsers and devices. This is a headache sometimes. Testing and quality assurance play a significant role in their work as they strive to deliver websites that meet the highest standards of performance and usability. Uh, regarding the soft skills, as uh, many colleagues has mentioned it, collaboration and effective communication are also important for web developers. They often work in teams collaborating with designers, content creators, and other developers to bring a website to life. 
a good communication skills help them to understand project requirements, provide updates, and ensure smooth coordination throughout the development process, and communicate also with the clients or stakeholders. In summary, web developers are instrumental in the digital space, their expertise in programming languages, ability to create functional and visually appealing websites and continuous learning contribute to the success of business and organizations in the online world. Their attention to detail, problem solving skills and effective communication make them valuable members of development teams. In my case, I'm currently working as a front-end developer. This means that I work on the client side. In other words, what the user sees and what they can interact with. I'm actively studying other technologies such as databases and other programming languages to be able to work on the server side. That is preparing the data that the client needs. This is known as backend developer. So I'm interested in knowing the entire stack to have a better visual and offer the best solution to the need of the client or end user. So that's all that I have. Uh, thanks a lot for staying with me. And I pass the control to you, teacher. Excellent. I'm like open mouth, right? With this, uh, with everything you can do with technology. You know, I feel so small. We are so small compared to technology nowadays, right? Yeah. Thank you, Felix. That was a Thank very you. good presentation. Um, so um, that was good. Now, what's the difference between customers and clients? Uh, this Maybe is... this question is for you or for anybody else uh, who knows the answer. So when you say my clients, okay, so what's yeah. the difference between a client and a customer? Yeah, th this is this is a good one. So when we say that someone is our client in simple words is someone that is paying us to build something right probably this person is going to use this product but mostly this product is for being consuming from someone else right this is the end user the real users uh, let's see. So let's say that we are building an e-commerce app. So who is our client? Our client is the, uh, let's say a brand, uh, La Curaçao. La Curaçao is our client. The end user are going to be those users that log in to the La Curaçao website and start buying from the e-commerce website. That is the difference. <laughs> All right. So yeah, that's the main difference. Like basically the clients, the client, that's that's a term that we use very frequently, for example, in the call center area. The client is a person that is basically paying me, right? And the client is providing service to another consumers. And those consumers are the customers. So basically that's yeah, the difference yeah. between clients and customers. All right. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Teacher. Excellent. Thank you very much, Phillips. That was a great presentation. I loved it. All right. So let's see, Wendy, are you ready? Let's go for it. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, great job, Felix and, and Ricardo and Heidi. I, I loved your presentations. Yeah. So yeah, let me share my screen. And let me know, please, and you can see the lady. Yes, I can. Yes. Okay. So I will start with the slideshow. Are you still able to see, right? Yes. Perfect. So let's start. Uh, data developers. That is the uh, role that I chose from the list that the teacher shared to us. 
So let's start. I would like to um, share some uh, background why I chose this role and because I was curious in uh, the beginning before to uh, did this research, I was thinking that uh, data analysts or data scientists and data developers, aka data engineers, can be uh, similar or they could be some differences. So I uh, started the research and I found this uh, great uh, picture that is showing us uh, the differences. So let's start with the data developer or data engineer. So uh, the data engineer is the responsible to prepare the data that is uh, the source for the data scientist who is the response, the data scientist is the responsible to um, prepare some recommendations, recommendations for the future or like uh, prepare predictions. And with that data, then appears this uh, data analyst and this person of this role takes the data from the data developers and from the data scientists and then prepares some views that can be used uh, for the businesses or for the organizations for decision making. So that's the difference. So uh, based on that, let's focus on the data developers. So what is the role of data developers? Well, uh, they are the responsible for designing, um, building, implementing, and testing new databases and also modifying um, existing databases for given companies or uh, sectors or different organizations or businesses. So with that in mind, let's talk about some key responsibilities for this role. And we can uh, find data collection, data transformation, database management, collaboration and communication similar with the other roles that my uh, teammates had been talked about these responsibilities. So let's focus on data collection. Data collection refers to gathering any data from uh, existing databases or spreadsheets that is in uh, Excel file and external Excel APIs. And data transformation is referring to um, removing any inconsistencies or errors from the data to ensure its quality. Then we have uh, data database management. So basically it's to design and build databases to store a large volume of data. And finally, collaboration and communication. So this refers that the data developers or data engineers needs to work with the stakeholders and understand the data needs and also the requirements. So basically, these are the, the key responsibilities that I um, try to include in these presentations. But there could be another ones like, uh, for example, um, uh, data, what, uh, data what, warehousing, um, data transformation and manipulation, and data governance, governance and security. But let's stay with the ones that I have explained. So let's talk about some skills and qualifications. And we have data manipulation. So data manipulation refers that this role needs to have certain knowledge and different tools and programming, programming languages and techniques to be used to manipulate data. Also, uh, they need to have some problem solving and um, analytic thinking. And this is because it's required to identify patterns, trends, and some relationships uh, of the data in order to solve and present solutions. Solve problems and, and present solutions. And we have also curiosity and learning mindset. This is because um, you need to keep uh, updated, updated sorry, in the latest technologies or techniques and different uh, processes that 
can help to um, manipulate data. And finally, the communication and collaboration, because um, this role needs to be in communication with non-technical and technical people to work in their um, specific project for manipulating data, sorry. And then, let's see. Sorry, we have some pros and cons of being a data developer. So let's start with the pros. And for the pros, uh, we have the salary. I uh, run a research and I found this uh, website, salary.com, and it's saying that in the United States, the average salary range is in the 70,000 and 90,000 dollars. So we can say that it pays really well being a data developer. And another pro uh, that we have with this role is that um, you can teach yourself because as you can see in the skills and the qualification, I was mentioning that it's uh, a priority that you need to keep uh, updated with the latest technology. So with this kind of off-roll, it's needed that you can have that curiosity to learn about the, the latest technologies. And uh, also another um, pros that we can mention, it's like, a, for example, with the uh, technical profile that are introverted person, it's something great because you or, or this role don't need to spend a lot of time in meetings. At the beginning of, of any project, it's, it's, it's needed to participate in meetings to understand the requirements, but it's not like a daily meetings in, in, the, in the journey for this role. So it's a, it's a great um, opportunity if you have this kind of, of profile. And I, I, I found this in, in some uh, testimonials, in some videos, and I, I think it, it's something that, that can be true. Now let's talk about some cons. And about the cons, uh, I put this image, it's a, a lady that is stuck a computer. So basically, uh, this is a kind of role that it's um, really demanded nowadays. So it will require from you spend a lot of time in your daily basis. So it's something that you need to be aware. And also another con that is coming with this uh, role, it's like um, maybe you are the, the role to be creative and create some applications. But for data developers, the core is data. So maybe there could be some difference based on the corporate jobs or the companies but basically that is the, the standard. So uh, as a conclusion, I can say the data developers role um, is playing a key role to unlocking the, uh, unlocking the, the value of the data for the organizations. Sorry. Yeah. And basically that's all. And does anybody here uh, have any questions? I'm happy to to answer any questions you have. No questions. So. All right, that's good. No questions. Everything's so crystal clear. All right, Wendy. Great job. All right, Perfect. very good. Very so good. Just wanted to share, teacher. This is this a uh, um, um, hilarious uh, uh, meme. It's about a. a, a T Rex, that is a, a stand upper comedy. So, like uh, the idea is like uh, he is asking about uh, some questions, and the second images to the right side is saying that select asterisk, asterisk from it's something like it's a, a common uh, query in the database. <laughs> so, it, it's a joke. <laughs> All, the right. all right, that's that yes. the reason why they were laughing here in, in the- Yeah, uh, and, and nobody is uh, laughing. <laughs> they understood and I was like, mm, I'll try to understand what she's <laughs> talking about, but <laughs> all right. Excellent, Wendy. Thank you very much. Now, we have a problem here. 
We only have 15 minutes and we have three people left. So let me ask you, can can you make it in can you make it um can you make it on time like a five minute ditch or do you need more time? I can do it quickly. All right, let's go for this. All right, just let me show my screen. Let's see. Well, I I thought when when I was doing this this presentation that I will have to be very brief because at this moment <laughs> everyone should should say anything that's left to say. So I, I want to talk a little bit as a software developer, and I had to point this. I have to make this point out that. I am not a developer, so it, it, it's kind of the, the outside view. So you will excuse me if I do not understand some things, but I will, I will okay. do my best as far as I research. All right. So, well, what do exactly they do? Uh, I, I will point out that they mainly do these three things in, in some sort of way. Building new features for their platforms or the applications, fixing bugs, and something related to production issues that I will touch later. So with the first point, uh, building features, it's kind of like the main thing of a software developer because if you need your software to do something, that's a feature. So you will need someone to program and make that thing to happen. I recall a lot uh, about the, the recent case, well, recently, it has been almost two years of that, I, I believe of uh, Twitter being bought by Elon Musk. And it was like a weekly rant of tweets uh, ranging from he will uh, fire half of the, of the people, of the developers, to make the other half stay at the office uh, for long and extended uh, periods of time, making all the features that he wanted that uh, app and website to have. So uh, as I understood, and, and I believe that was Ken who say that, and the part of the information, where will you get that information? It's, it will have to come from the backend. The backend developers are usually the ones who set that things to uh, the things that you don't see, like the, the main codes and where it, the, your information will be stored, things like that. And the front end will be the client side, your side, my side as a, as a client, a customer, a normal people, mortals, and uh, we will see <laughs> that that kind of that kind of stuff, the images, and, and that's the, the front end as far as I, I understand. Uh, the second main function is to fix bugs, oh, Xbox Bunny. <laughs> uh, a bug is, is essentially something that you don't want to happen while you are in the in the application, you know, perhaps you click somewhere and the app freezes or things like that. So uh, while fixing bugs, you will have to do search, research and improvement because perhaps that main area of your code is not working as well because perhaps uh, there is a line uh, of code, perhaps a comma, a, a dot, some other kind of symbols that is not in the right place to be so the, the code cannot be read correctly by the machine itself. And so the, the code does not work as good as it should be. So that kind of, uh, it's what a bug is, this context, as far as I understand. So uh, that's another part of the, of the things that they are usually doing. And finally, uh, production issues. Uh, when you, are ready to, to make your app or your website go into the production is as I understood, uh, when you're activated, let, let's say it that way. So perhaps you activate and the client cannot use it because the, it never loads or perhaps the information is not uh, as good as it should be. Uh, I saw uh, perhaps a, a site that you enter your your email and your password, and it says that it is not your password, and show it to, to everyone. I, I believe it's a joke, but there was a site that, <laughs> or an image from a site that says, oh, that password cannot be taken because this account already got it. So 
that that's kind of thing that I do not want to, to do. Uh, the second one is to identify what the problem is, what exactly is causing this, this kind of trouble. It is something from the code. It is something from the uh, developer side. They did something wrong. Or it's something that I, I believe it's called uh, an eight frame, something like that. That is, a, you can have a, an issue from the hardware, from the software, but there is also a, an error from the user side, perhaps you are not uh, using the app or the site that should be, that is an issue. So, and you can have to, you might have to redeploy the application. That means you will have to shut it down and restart it to see if that fixed the problem. Or perhaps it won't because you may have something like uh, other kind of issues. So that's what I've learned uh, up to this moment. Uh, software developer, a really interesting career, but perhaps very, very yeah. complex. For, for yes, me. it's a very complex world. A lot of terms that we need to learn, definitely. All right, Fabrizio, so thank you very much for your presentation. And we're going to move quickly. Oh my God, we only have 10 minutes, guys. So let's go for ahead. And I think there's one more, right? So let's try to make it a, a, you know straightforward. Okay, let me share my screen. All right. I'm going to try to be faster because most of the other uh, teammates also talk about game programmer. So I will focus on some next information about that. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So, uh, well, we, we all know that a game programmer is who uh, has the, the expertise creating uh, games right video games so uh, we can focus on some of the skills that a uh, game programmer should have and first you need to know how to call it right and also you need to know about sound animation and video even is you shouldn't be an expert in that uh, a specific subject but you need to talk with the artists and with the designers and also with the music to integrate all those uh, aspects in the game, right? So that's why also the communication is very important because you need to, to, to have a meeting with all the team to design the game and uh, apply some of the, 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 the needs that the client has to be implemented in the game, right? And also you need to uh, have uh, the ability to do problem solving because, uh, well, in all the work for parameter always, are going to be problems to be solved. And also the teamwork is very important for that, as I mentioned, because you need to talk with all the team. And the analysis to uh, understand what is the need for the game. Then uh, when you, you know how the, the game is going to be, and uh, what about is the game, you need to decide in which platform you need to uh, deliver that game, right? So, I have it here, uh, for example, you can create game for Mac or PC or for consoles like PlayStation and Xbox, or also you can create some game for mobile. And depending on the platform, you need to focus the language that you are going to use for that. Uh, and it's interesting that, for example, uh, C Sharp and C++ are a, a language that is common in all those platforms to create video games. Um, some of them have one specific uh, language. For example, Nintendo has their the specific language to create games. I'm also supporting other uh, games, but I, I hear, we, we have here only some examples. And you need to focus uh, how the game is going to be uh, optimized for every platform. And finally, uh, depending on the platform that you pick for to create the game, you also need to uh, know which engine you are going to use to uh, work with the game, right? Because every specific engine gives you some uh, advantage at the moment. For example, if you want to create a first shooter game, or if you want to create a uh, platform game, right? So uh, uh, that those are all the aspects you need to consider when you create the game. Uh, not only thinking in how it's going to be the game, but also in which platform is going to be the, the, 
deploy it. And yeah, that's it. All right, that was very good. That was very concise and straight to the point. Very good, very good, uh, Jorge. Nice, nice to know that you like this part of the, you know, technology and stuff like that. Very good. Now let's finish with um, I think it's Camilo, right? Um, okay. Let me share my screen. Uh, let me know. Let me know if you can see. Yes. Oh, sorry. I, I just still can see. Can Can you still see? No, right now. Sorry, I can see the sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I it's moved the the thing. All uh, right. Now I can see. Uh, okay. Uh, let's what, what is happening. Uh, as my colleague here said, um, <laughs> game developers looks like a really, really good role. Uh, it's really interesting because you think, um, I, I'm, I'm gonna try to give my speech like a mixing roles because, because of the time, but basically, um, um, when I think in software developers in any field, like, uh, I don't know, web development, um, backend development or something like that, I'm thinking on how they can perform their, their job. Um, basically as I'm, I'm a software developer on any of these fields, I know how can we can build some specific things or I can imagine how I can build some specific things like, I don't know, a web application or a, a streaming tool. I mean, I haven't um, built something like that yet, but I can imagine what, what kind of tools I can use uh, for doing that. But when I think in game developers, I can imagine how they build the, the games. Um, I know there are a lot of design patterns. There are a lot of things that they can they they use similar to any of a, any other role. But I can imagine how how is the implementation of of that. Uh, some years ago, I tried to to make just a a POC with um, uh, this this thing real engine that is basically Unity, the the thing that is um, that 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 is the engine of many games um in the um right now in the in the industry but i i couldn't make more like a poc like a something very very simple so i think this specific role is very challenging there are a lot of things like um for him mentioned and ricardo mentioned like there are animation there are a lot of things like a sound and this kind of stuff um or a role another role that i found really interesting is basically the hardware infrastructure engineers, basically because it's something that we don't do every day. Basically, we can imagine how we can use some cloud service like AWS or Azure or something like that, but I can imagine how it's working um, in the at, at the Facebook infrastructure, for example. Uh, I think that it could be really, really challenging because you are talking about the network between a continent between a lot of servers and this kind of stuff. So I, I think that it's really, really interesting role to listen to someone talking about, about how they perform their task. But I think that it could be a little bit boring for me <laughs> because I don't like to be like uh, close to near, near to a server. I, I don't know how to do that. So <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that that the, that's the other one web developer, but I already talked about it. So that's pretty much for me. <laughs> All right, excellent. Uh, very good. Let me just write down your name. Camilo Gonzalez, right? Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much, Camilo, for being so concise and straight up. Uh, to the point, I thank you so very much for that. Um, so guys, let me switch to Spanish, all right? Bye guys, se acabó el curso. Este, agradezco a los que de principio a fin estuvieron eh, todas las noches. Comprendo que algunos pues por diversas actividades no pudieron estar en, lo que, en las clases anteriores, pero estuvieron el día de ahora e hicieron su presentación y eso es también de agradecerse un gran montón.
All right. Uh, así que no me queda más que decirles, bueno, con los feedbacks, denme un chancecito para ponerlos bien bonitos, porque los tengo en papel aquí todo a lo, a lo que iba escuchando. Y yo se los voy a mandar a ustedes. All right. Se quedan pendientes de su WhatsApp para el siguiente paso que les indique ya sea aplaudo o eh, la coordinadora que es Gabriela. Así que personalmente, pues yo le agradezco a Fabricio, a Wendy, a Félix, Jorge, Aníbal, Camilo, Ricardo, a uh, Heidi, Claudia, and Kevin. Thank you guys. Thank you so very much for being here. I really admire people like you. You are very smart. I want to be with you when I grow up. <laughs> All right. Okay. So enjoy the rest of the enjoy the rest of the night and um, keep learning, guys. Keep learning. All right. Keep learning uh, technology. Keep improving English. All right. Keep every keep doing everything in your hand in order to be the best. All right. De nuevo, gracias. Pasen feliz noche. Nos vemos pronto. Esperamos. Si no, pues, igual, el éxito en todo lo que tengan que emprender. Se cuidan, guys. Feliz gracias, noche. Richard. Thank you. Wow. Gracias, 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 Kevin. Kevin. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. Hi. Bye.